um, which has just been an amazing journal, journey for me because I've gotten an opportunity to travel the world with them. Uh, we've gone to Japan, South Korea, Australia, just a few of some of the countries that um, I've had the pleasure of, and he's allowed me to come. So I figured, why well, still got his ear right, a little right. bit? <laughs> I'm yeah. taking advantage of it, you know, because it's a blessing. Yeah. You know, they don't always work. Nobody's trying to have their mom around. Mm. So, especially knowing the industry. But, you know, I've always kept it real with them and let them know that, hey, I'm here for them or whatever. So, that was it, basically. Good. That's what moms are for. Nice. Does anybody here have a question? Miss Sydney Stoke, come on. Come up here so you can see. This is Miss Sydney Stoke. This is one of our Creek Monique scholars. Hey, how y'all doing today? What's up? What's up, Zen? So, so I wanna, Hi. I want you to actually sing some for real. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hey, I put in a question for him. Can you sing some for real? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What you want me to? Um, let's see. A I got, I fake, I fake got a cold. I ain't gonna lie to you, but what you want me to? Um. Oh, okay. The, uh, I think about all the time. I go to the other country. If we Woo! try to die, we can be somewhere to climb in. It's warm as long as you are around me. You go ahead. Yeah, baby, they gonna get you spine. Hey. I wish that we could take some time. Oh, okay. But we were ever out of If you need bag up, you know I am available. Oh, we, I know you coming through. You know I sing at church in the praise team, so I'm, I'm trained. I'm trained very well. I want you to know. You know I, got, I, got, I got one more. No, you got your. We'll come back later. We're gonna come back to you. You got your request. Anybody else have a question? Anybody else? Like, come on, Miss Kim. How is? Oh wait, can I just say something him? Yes, come on. How was your experience having COVID? Uh oh. Uh -oh. He probably got off the table. Oh, okay. We have COVID. Take that out of your lungs. He's coming right back. Okay, okay. <laughs> my bad, my nose is It's all good. Um, our scholar said um, we're going to get to it. How, how did COVID affect you? We saw what we saw in the media, but we want to hear from, from you. Um, I'm still recovering, you know, I be like even catching the call right now, I still look at it like, I was, you know, but it was a, this is a phase, you know, in my life that I had never thought could happen to me, you know, I had never been hospitalized ever, you know, so I was in there, I found myself when I woke up, man, I just was shocked, I thought it was a dream, because I didn't think that, um, I didn't remember when I went in, how I got in, you know, saying what had happened, but, you know, I found myself in there from like the end of October to top of December. And uh man, I was down. I had never been down like that before. I never had no heart problems. I never had no little problems and every problem they told me I had. And then when they told me, I'm just like, I just didn't know how, you know, so um they didn't know when I was supposed to be released or whatnot. But it also kinda like it affected me in a good and a bad way because I had to I felt like maybe I just need to sit down and just take a little break for a little while because I've been on the 13, now like 12, 12 years, over a decade, just doing what I've been doing, like on a repetitive, you know, annual thing, like, you know, I, I come, you know, not just, I just go to the studio and sing the song and be in there all night, but I find myself traveling on the road. I've been around a hell of people that, you know, and with this pandemic, it hit us all last year the way it did. And I just wasn't being as, I just wasn't as thinking like it was. It's just, I wasn't really being as responsible as I should have been, you know what I'm saying? Taking it as serious as I, as I did. But, um, you know, I'm almost back on it now. I'm like a little bit over 90%. I feel good, you know, to not be able to walk when I got off the bed. I was like, I was like, damn, I never, you know what I'm saying? Never thought I'd not be able to walk. It was kind of one of those, you know, PTO, a little physical therapy or whatnot to just even learn how to walk. And 
my memory was coming back because it's a lot of effects from from COVID that was going on and um you know but now like I said I'm straight you know I've been back in the studio last last week and um I can't wait till y'all hear my you know what I'm saying what I've been working on okay yeah. nice we definitely gonna we definitely gonna check it out mom we already know that was probably a trying experience for you what was it like for you seeing your son battle with COVID. Oh, it was just, it was heartbreaking. Um, I, not knowing if he was going to make it, you know, they basically told me he was literally dying mm. and there was nothing else that they could do. So I do what I know to do best and that's go to God in prayer mm -hmm. and contact the family, friends, and basically the whole world. I had the whole world praying for Jay. Mm. Um, Cause it was, they, they, what they was telling me just wasn't wasn't looking good at all. Okay. Uh -oh. And uh, then I got an opportunity to see him. I got an opportunity to grab and I, you know, like pray over him when I was in the hospital. Because I'm like, I just, I cannot, because I had already lost my husband in April, and then I lost my dad. Okay. Well, his, then I lost his father my my uh, ex-husband then i lost my dad i was like all this is happening we're saying just months apart and then they're telling me he's not gonna make it it was just overwhelming you know and i was like god please please don't let me lose another one you know right, right, and right. my prayer and i'm grateful for that amen amen we actually have um a question from one of our scholars he's actually in here uh tyler you want to come up i'm gonna do your question Huh. You want to sit back to the title? You want to come ask a question? You want to come up while I ask your question, huh? Okay. Well, Mr. Mr. Tyler Minifield back here, he asked, what was your inspiration that kept you going when you were sick with COVID, Jeremiah? Like, what what pulled you back? Oh, uh, he uh, he want to show me. Okay. <laughs> well, I had just lost my pops, too. So, um, luckily, I don't know, when I woke up, they had some pictures next to my, on my bed rest, right? So, okay. I... When I woke up, I'm just looking, and then I, you know, I'm like a bat. I can't see. So I got contacts, and I got these glasses, but I didn't have neither. So I was in there really just squinting everywhere, just trying to just figure out what was really going on. Yeah. And just the people that was helping me out and all the, you know, just thinking that that, that was an effect, even just because I couldn't really see nothing. But then I saw, I was so close to my bed, I saw pictures of my pops where I just lost. Mm. And then, uh... <clears throat> This big dude right here. <laughs> which is my youngest, which is just my youngest son, his name is Pharaoh. Okay. I had a picture of him and um <laughs> and just pictures of my family. It just kinda made me feel like, man, I was listening to like old 50 cent like records and just right. certain records that I was just I had um got like a little back from from Mom Deuce after a while when I was starting to like get you know, get my movements and everything back. And just, you know, certain songs just stuck in my head that I was like, man, I just kept, just, they kept ringing back and forth every day. And I was like, man, certain things just don't keep me moving. And, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of prayer here and there. And just the family, I'm just, finally hit that phone. I was calling everybody as much as I could remember their number. And, uh, yeah, that's really what kind of kept me going, you know? Okay. Nice. This next question is for both of you. And, um... I'm in this situation with both of you are, as, as you know, Ms. Linton said, I work with my mother as well. Uh, are y'all here? Can y'all hear me? Okay, there you go. All right, so the next question yeah. is, yes. how do you separate mom life and manager life? And um, do you enjoy being a momager? Of course you enjoy doing it, but do you separate mom and manager or is it just all, all in one? You get what you get. Actually, that's a pretty good question, but it's really not difficult at all to, to separate it. You know, my skill set helps me with that. I, like I said, I was in corporate America for decades, so I know when to turn it on and turn it off. Like, he's my son first okay. and foremost, but then there's the business side that I know that's important, that's going to help him in his legacy and help him be able to leave some things for his kids. Okay. So I keep it real with him. I, I tell him, you know, exactly what's going on. Um, I keep him updated as much as I can, but then when it's time to have family time, 
it's family time. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So mm -hmm. it's, it's, we just we keep it like that. It's not all in one, but it, we know how to keep it separate, but yet know how to respect each other's, you know, space. Okay. I know how to respect his space. I'm not all up clean up on him with certain things that I know because he's a, he's still a grown man at the end of the day, but he's also my son. But then he's also this this major international recording artist. So we just keep the boundaries set, you know, accordingly. Okay, cool, cool. Um, another question going back to the COVID real quick, and then I'll ask um, the scholars here if they have a couple of questions. Going back to COVID, Jeremiah, when did you realize you had COVID? Like what symptoms were you having when you start realizing, okay, something's not right here? I had woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, Shaking, I was shivering. I had, you know, I had went to go take a leak in the bathroom, and I, I felt the bathroom kind of shaking. I was like, "Am I creepy? Like, I know I'm not." So when I sat back on the couch right here, I, I, had, I had felt it. So I got to take it like Nyquil and just whatever I thought could be a remedy. But um, that next day, I don't even like I said when I when I actually woke up, I hadn't remembered the day I had went in or how it happened until like obviously from hindsight now. I just be like, I remember that night um, when I started shaking and kind of shivering, it felt like something that was just different. And then I um, I had told my dudes to go take me to the hospital because I had, something wasn't quite right. And so that was the last time I feel like, I don't know what happened after that night. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what happened after that. And I don't know if they just knocked me out or what, but I just know when I woke up, they were saying, I had woke up two times, like why they, why they had the tube, they had this tube down my throat. And I remember, like, I thought I was dreaming, like I said, so it was two times I woke up and I just saw, like, I didn't know what was going on in my mind, drawing from blind, too. <laughs> so I just, when I saw somebody, you know, she was trying to explain to me and I couldn't speak to her. So I was right there, just kind of like, whoa, 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 you know, and she was like, Jay, you know what I'm saying? You, you got, you, you caught this and that. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's, I had woke up because I was getting punctured so much on the daily, they had me taking like 12 shots throughout the day, each day. Like somebody would come in every, hour and a half I just you know some of them shots were some killers too like then it was something that was real you know I probably couldn't tell that I was really taking the shot but you know um, that's when I really knew though that something was wrong and like I said when I woke up I, you know some full circle and um you know I knew it really hit me, like I said, when I tried to actually get up. And when you when you when you rely on yourself your whole life to do things, and then you, you can't do them no more. It's like I was like, oh damn, I didn't know that. You know, I didn't know all the effects of it because I'm thinking it's just really just some immune type of, you know, you mess up your, your breathing or you might be have a cold. I didn't think it was gonna mess up my muscle memory and just getting up and learning how to walk and go got to go to the bathroom on my own. I was calling folks. I had never had to have nobody do that for me. You know what I'm saying? So there yeah, I was just kind of like a, a baby shark in the water just trying to figure out how to get it all back. So Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So Jeremiah, when you're not working musically, what are your passions slash hobbies? Like what, what you do for fun other than music? Man, if this year wasn't like it was for the last year and a half, because right. everybody was kind of like, Kicking the crib, I was just trying to make the best of what I could doing the crib. So I got a spot here, which is where I call obviously home. But I, I usually work a lot of, you know, a lot of opportunities in Chicago. I had to realize the things that started working for me was when I when I had to go get it, like because nobody gonna give it to you. Right. I don't know why for this to be such a big city. Like, you know, I go to the A and it's like I'm bumping to Mars and they they be wanting to help me. You know what I'm saying? They be wanting to get on going to the studio and they know hey, it's like. You know, they be wanting them because the best, they got some good food there too. And they be wanting to even let me try their food without charging me. Like, you know, these different type of, uh, and then I go to LA, which is where I have another crib. And, um, okay. and when, I, when I'm there, it's really, when I really like block in and people come through. And my, my house is like a studio too. So okay. I wake up and, you know what I'm saying, I get there. So in the midst of this pandemic, I found myself out there a little more. Okay. You know, in LA, because I was able to work and people, you know, I had to just mind who was coming in and out of my crib. But, okay. you know, when I'm not in the studio, shit, I'm doing whatever. I hope I got when I could, I go, you know, the world was, yeah, if the world won't close down, I found myself cooking and learn how to cook more because I ain't, 
Okay. You know, I couldn't go out and order out. So I, yeah. you know, little boy man on the chef side, I started doing that. I started, you know, I, I they ran out of Netflix for me to watch. I, right. I don't watch TV like that anyway. So right, right, right. <laughs> it wasn't no more movies, so right. I hadn't seen it all. So I was like, I'm just trying to find stuff to do to, you know, let the time go by. Okay. Let the time on my little man. With the kid, nice, nice. We go to uh, LA all the time. Well, not all the time. We go to the NAACP Awards every year. So if you ever in LA, when we go to the NAACP Awards, it'd be nice, you know, for you to get up with us. Definitely. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to plug y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so does anybody in here have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Come on, This is Arthur McFadden. He's one of our Crete Monique scholars as well. This is the question. Hey, Arthur, what's up? Hello, what? mom. This is a question for the mom. Um, how stressful is being his manager? And yeah, how stressful is being his manager? Uh, it's, I would say it does have its challenges <laughs> because he is my son. So I have to know when to pull back, especially if somebody says something I don't like in the industry about him or, you know, the meeting is not going the way I feel it should go. And, some words are said that are not too impressive. They, uh, they kind of go the same way. Yeah. On my end, because I, don't, you know, it's yeah. like it's like a. You got to know when to pull back. Like, okay, let me let me stay professional. What if he was my son? How would I react? You follow me? Mm, but yeah. sometimes it's hard to do that right. because the mama bear, the, the mama bear is there <laughs> and gonna do all I can to protect them. You know, and maybe some ways that someone else that's that close that's helping him on the team would not. Okay, got you, got you. Um, I had a question come in, and I I, I, I empathize with it. So, do you and your mother, because y'all work together, um, we know it's good times. Do y'all have the the bad times as well? Is it arguments? Is it disagreements? Well, that's why I say it kind of goes both okay. ways. I'm trying to interject. Right, okay. Because it was like, because I don't want to hear nobody talking to her no other way. Right, right, that's right. The, how, how things could go and conversations could be here. Right, when right, you're right. dealing with, let's just say, I'm trying, we're trying to get and negotiate a, a record. And, you know, every song is different with me because it might be just a different situation. I might throw a hook at somebody just because I rock with them and it's my dog and I heard you on it anyway. Or it's somebody that want to get me on the hook or buy something from me. And I don't even know you, so I don't care about it like that. But you talking real funny to my mom's like, I ain't gonna let that happen either. And, you know, it's just it's a lot of that that could that that that's went on. Right. And then you know, it's certain things I be like, I mean, you know, we all kind of like I'm still learning as a student to me because mm -hmm. um in, in this game because every it, it's, it is what it is. You can't really I didn't go to school for this. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. went to try to go to school for business, and in the midst of that, things took off. So I didn't really take advantage of the time, the little time I had to learn what I could, you know, so even to this day, you know, it's certain things that I'm still learning, and, you know, I feel like as a manager, she is too, like, you know, certain, a lot of things, so it's really, a, it goes both ways. Nice. nice. And if it's, if it's decisions and choices that he's making that I may not be feeling, I let him know, but that don't mean he gonna, he's not gonna do it because I'm doing this. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. And it, it, I would say 99% of the time, he, he's right when it comes to this, this making certain mu music, business music decisions for him and what's best for him. Gotcha. You know, because I prepped him as a kid to be a doctor, not a, right. not not a, a 49. Right, right, right. So every summer he was in upper bound programs, okay. uh, scientist programs, all kinds of stuff related to nice. science. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so now he's just, and music was a side piece, uh -huh. you know. Now he's made it part of his life, so I I had to kind of get in line with that and respect okay. that. Nice. Okay, mother. We have time for a couple of more questions. I know Antoine, you had a question. You can come on up. Uh, hello. Um, all right. So uh, to go back to what y'all were saying uh, about like negative feedback, how exactly do you respond to it? Like someone say, I really don't like like how you sing at all, or how do you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? The haters. How do you respond to? How do you respond to the haters? How do you respond to the haters? Right, right. That's a good question. That's a good question. That's a real good question. Um, 
if that was ever, if that was the case, and you know what, people reached out before and probably like, yo, you don't sound, you don't give me the real Jeremiah, like this type, you know, and I'd be like, I go, I've been, I've went back in on records, like I've done joints with like Khaled, and you know what I'm saying, but that's a, like a personal relationship I got with DJ Khaled. So every time we did something, he, I go in like the last joint we did was called "You Stay with Me," he, him and Lil Baby and Meek Mill and uh, Jay Balvin, like about a year or two ago. And I actually recorded that song like three times because he kept calling back, like, yo, you ain't, you know, keep doing this and that. But we go, that'll happen here and there. But um, if it's somebody that I don't really rock with, like I said, she talking about they, they want me to do some extra, spend some more time with some, I probably would just say, man, well, you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we can keep moving. Like. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. And, that, and then for people that have anything negative to say, you really have to have a thick skin in this business. Yeah. You really cannot, if at all possible, get caught up in what people, their opinions may be about you. You got to know what your purpose is right. and focus on that and stay, you know, tuned into that. Yeah. And that'll help you get through it. Definitely. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, question for uh, you, Jeremiah, and, and mom, you can answer this as well uh, for him. What do you want your legacy to be? What do you want people way, way down the line when you're an old man? What do you want people to remember you as? Mm. Uh, I'm a little deep sometimes. You know, coming from the south side, <laughs> coming from the south side of Chicago, like I said, it's been, a, it's been a bottom up for me. I'm a modern knife, and you know, I come, I come from the Chicago public school. Then, to be honest with you, um, you know, music. Uh, I was say music aside, but right now I'm not I'm not even who I who I am yet to be still. I got a little more of that, a lot more of that I feel like I gotta do and that's why, you know, I can I'm a walking testimony, even just go through what I did over the last couple months of uh, building with COVID. I'm like, I like, man, I'm not done. I'm here I'm here to do some more. Um and I want people to just really get to know me just period. I can I can walk better, I can talk. Yeah. Now, um, you know, at the end of the day, going on the road, like I know what I'm good at. I know what I've become great at because to me, you know, you stick with it. You don't quit. You're gonna be bound to get it, and that's with anything in life that you put your mind to. So, uh, you know, I'm just Southside boy from Chicago. That just, you know, whatever I want to do, I but I thought I could do. I just, I did it. That's yeah. all. Mom, do you have anything to add? You know, what do you see your son uh, as his legacy? As far as, as far as I'm concerned, just. Leaving my legacy to my children and knowing that they got here this praying mother for the grandkids and know they had this praying grandmother Amen. and to always trust in God, keeping him first and he will direct your steps and help you with everything that you decide you want to do in life. He okay. will help you. That's first, first and foremost for me. And if they get that, they're going to be OK. Yeah. Amen. Those are wise words. Thank you so much. Um, do we have yeah. any, any thank more you. questions? Yes, thank you. Any more questions from you I all? Got one. I got one. Oh, I didn't, I didn't Mr. Taylor. Uh-uh, because uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 you know, my question. Uh, that you text me, no man. Hey, just real quick, how y'all doing? Hey, thanks for um, uh, talking to our kids today. We definitely appreciate it. Um, uh, if it was any advice, we have a lot of future great leaders in this room, and that's how we, we, we inspire them. What advice would you give them to keep them focused on their dreams and what they're trying to pursue? Uh, but with me, you know, education always been a key factor in my, you know, my career. I feel like, you know, just being around, you never know who you're really sitting next to right now. And that's what I didn't take advantage of because when I was in school, I, when I went to Columbia, and even every school that I've been to from, you know, from elementary, obviously, to my college years, like, I didn't realize when I got to that age, you never know you sit next to, and these could be people that you can work with eventually that can teach you something that you never thought you might want to do, and you could probably give them something that they might not, you know, that, that they might not know that they want to get this up into as well. So, you know, just take advantage of the people you're around right now. This is a program I was uh, unfamiliar with, and um, I met a lot of friends that became lifelong friends, you know, um, on, on the way, and I would just say, you know, you know, keep God first, stay in school, man. A lot of people got their, their this and that to say about school, but for me, school, school is helpful, you know, and, um, you know, like I say, stick with it, don't quit it, whatever it is you want to do. Nice. Stick with it, don't quit it. We don't need to stick with it, don't quit it. Well, 
We have one one last question from uh Miss Auntie Pam. I just so happy to know that y'all share a birthday. How has that gone for you oh, wow. for the last 33 years? Oh, wow. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I always thought I was a doctor for a second. <laughs> I thought they had got up one day on their birthday and just picked me up or something. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's fun. I ain't gonna lie to you. At first, it was a little, I still couldn't believe it that I was actually born on her, on her B day. But every year, you know, it's just, it's been, you know, it's been a lifetime work for those B days as unforgettable for me. And you know, one thing that I always thought that was just a little, a little odd, but now it's, it's like it's dope that I thought I was born on a B day. Me, so. And when he was when he was younger, it was all about him. But then when he became an adult, it's oh, yeah. just kind of flipping now. It's yeah. like, mom, what do you want? What do you want for your birthday? What do you yeah. know? It's real. It's real. It's real nice right now. Nice. <laughs> I don't get no more gifts. <laughs> Now he needs to get gift. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Hey. Nice. We thank you all so much for, um, for coming. You and your mama, Jerry. This, you. this is an amazing. Thank you so much. Yes. yes, this is amazing. You all know you are welcome anytime. Okay. For me, I mean, y'all can come up here anytime. I didn't know you were an Upper Bound uh, <laughs> alumni, so that's perfect. If you want to come up, you know, when the world opens back up and talk to our scholars, you know they'd love to see you. Uh, we got a basketball gym too. If you want to come hoop, you know what I'm saying. I, you know, said I wave you a couple of hours, all that. You know, it's all good. So, but we really thank you all for for coming and, and speaking with us. And our scholars, I'm sure, really enjoyed it. And I know they took something from this. But I know I did, and I'm growing. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you all. Please be safe. Continue to be safe and continue to get well, Mr. Jeremiah. You guys get well. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Be safe. Bye. Bye.